<laughs> I'm singing to my baby over here, you know, Camilo Sesto. <laughs> That's a favorite singer, Camila. Hi, everybody. This is Angelo Quinones, and you reach Zion Ministries. Zion Ministries is designed to give you dependable and accurate answers that come straight from God's holy and inspired word, the Bible. And I'm over here with my daughter, like I said before, Anna Devane. Hi, Anne. <laughs> and she's a special child. She's four years old, but she's a special child, and she's as sweet as the newest button. Oh, uh, she's so beautiful. She is a beautiful child. She's a beautiful child, in, inward, inwardly and outwardly. You know, it's just amazing. Well, let's pray, Father, in Jesus' name. We come to you in different time zones. <laughs> we come to you, oh Lord. You do have a sense of humor putting me in the Philippines of all places. And um, I just praise your holy name for your... for, for I, I praise your holy name because it is great and you are great. And um, I'm glad that I can t come to you once more um, by the blood of Jesus and by the new and living way. And I, I just praise you for, for, for your planning and for your decision. And uh, having me here so far away from my home uh, country, the United States of America, New York City, Queens, of all places. But anyway, yes, you do have a sense of humor, Lord. Um, and uh, you gave me two beautiful, beautiful children um, and, and a wonderful wife to boot, even though things are not perfect. <laughs> But in the wee hours of the morning now, Lord, we just come to you and we just just thank you for all things, uh, spiritual and physical, and we just look upon your face for your blessing and multiplication of the study. Um, multiply it, bless it to the hearts of the to the to the to the to the, to the hearers, to the elect, and uh, I just pray all these things that you may do great things with the study and and. With, of people yet to be born in Jesus' name, amen. Well, guys, this is the coup de grace. This is the key. So, I mean, it's 12 30 in the morning. As I say, the wee hours in the morning to the Lord, He does have a sense of humor. I mean, you know, I usually don't pray like that, but it's, 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 it's you know, I mean, I was just thinking, you know, to myself, right, like, what am I doing here in the Philippines? <laughs> and I, well, I came here to get married and to have children, and I mean, after the after uh, uh, you know a certain age, I mean, goodness gracious! I mean, you know, but you know, the Trinity doctrine, uh, the doctrine of the Trinity remains the same whether you're here or there or whatever happens to you, whatever the case may be. It's going to be here no matter what you know people think about it or if they bless it, if they curse it, it doesn't make a difference. God is God is. Listen, God is <laughs> the reward of those who diligently seek him. He's going to be here when all the, the terrorists and the skeptics and the atheists and whatever the case may be, the cultists or whatever, whatever. Okay, I'm long gone and in a cemetery someplace. You understand know what I'm saying? Well, let's get at it. Now, we, the last, we're looking, we're really involved in, in, in the, the Trinity. I mean, I just, I, you know, we've been studying for several months and actually for several years recorded in the Bible. I mean, it's all over the place. Well, the word Trinity is not in the Bible, somebody tells me. Well, so what? I say, okay, the word trimesta is not in the Bible and it's the pregnancy splattered all over the pages of the Bible. People getting pregnant left and right. I mean, trimesta, I mean, those are the three... You know, periods. No, no pun intended. You know that that uh, you know divides it into three uh, portions of nine months. You know, first trimester, second trimester, and third trimester. Trimester is not in the Bible. It means it has the word three in there. Trimester, but it's not in the Bible. But there's people getting pregnant. You know, all the all the pages are like the Bible. Just make a difference. Okay, that's just a deal. The deal's a deal, and uh, that's just a deal. Now, um, I. I actually, I was very, very sad when, I, and this is a new phone that I have, and it's really, it's like, it's so bright, the page, it's like somebody shining a light behind the phone, you know, right, like right through, you know, it's, it's just a beautiful thing to be old. I hope it's coming out to you guys, you know, the, 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 the brilliance of this page, the, 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 the glare of it all, it's really quite beautiful. I, I was sad because I couldn't find the original situation that I had on my phone. 
But I'm telling you, this is a better app than that. This is a better app than that Subtuagent app. This is a Subtuagent also, but this is a better app. So, I mean, you know, that's just it. Well, it... <laughs> my love, for so much. my love. Um, she's four years old, by the way. She's four years old. You know, hi, my love. That's just a, that's just a deal. Now, uh, Anna means grace, by the way. And then my my uh, son Sean Donnelly. His name uh, Sean means uh, uh, God is gracious. I got those names um, uh, from General Hospital. Uh, Anna Devane and, and Sean Donnelly. I always used to say, you know, until I gave up, you know, <laughs> all I need is Robert Scorpio, uh, you know, and I'm, I can't lose, you know, <laughs> you have all the three agents, you know, that's just, you know, that's just it. Now, um, we already praised for, for the study, so let's continue. Now, the last study we uh, were in actually had to do with the Hebrew side of things. And so we looked at Naaseh, you know, me Menu, Nereda, Lanu, we looked at all those and, and more. And we looked at, um, you know, six different uh, Hebrew words that have to do, okay, with uh, plural pronouns of, of, you know, for God. And we saw that four out of the six of those, okay, have nu at the end, which means us in Hebrew. Our, us, whatever. You understand what I'm saying? So that's just the deal, including lanu found and recorded in Isaiah chapter 6, verse 8. And that's just it. Now, um, now we're going to go to the Greece of Tuigen, though, and look at that. This is an offspring study, okay, of uh, Genesis chapter 18, and we were doing a tr Trinity uh, studies uh, throughout that entire chapter. Uh, this is the deal. Now, uh, now we're going to do chapter 19 uh, after I finish uh, 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 these verses of the Lord will. Telo, Greek word, telo, bulletai, you understand? For will. By the way, before I forget, I, you know, um, as we grow in grace and in the knowledge of the Lord, we should grow in our in our understanding of the Trinity. Now, check this out. The reason why there can be and there are three persons to the Trinity, okay, is that every one of them has a mind, and every one of them has a will. The will of the Holy Spirit is recorded in verse 11 of chapter 12 of 1 Corinthians. And he dispenses the gifts according to his own bulletai, his own will, bulletai, because the Greek word there. And we see the Greek word for thelo, for the Father and the Son. Okay. And so that's just it. Now let's get to this now. Actually, I counted, okay, uh, the words recorded here. Now I think it's either here or like um, it's either here or verse 2 that actually has 44 different, I mean not different but in all 44 Greek words I mean you know John 1, 1 only has uh, let me see 17 and so, and so this has like 44 or the other one has 44 Chuck, you know uh, verse 2 but, you know I'm not going to count to forget <laughs> one of these uh, verses has like 44 uh, verses I mean, uh, Greek words. Uh, so it's over here. Kai e penchate as. Kai e el as. Let me see. It's over here. It's over here. Now, is this the... Let me see. Okay, okay. Ka... Ka mo men. Ka mo men. It says over here. Ka mo men. Antro pan. Okay, now, um, Anthropon, uh, Kat, uh, Ekona, uh, Hemon, Kat, same thing as Kat, uh, uh, Moi, Osen, Hemon. Now, let's just stop there, okay? Now, um, this is interesting because it says over here, uh, and God said, Okay, um, ka momen, uh, now the, the thing is that that is different, okay, um, let me see here, because, uh, ka momen is different from the Greek situation that I have that had, uh, boy e omen, 
Boi-e-o-men is the subjunctive there in the Greek Septuagint. This is not boi men over here, okay? It's a different construction. But the thing is that the men is making this word uh, plural, okay? Plural, the men. That's, that's the same thing in the end of these two different uh, words found, found in, in two different apps. Okay, uh, boi e o men is is another version of poeo okay now what is that all about poeo men why is it poeo men then well and i'm staying with the other original app that i have poeo men well um poeo men has the men in the last portion of the word so that's that's uh has to do with master uh, master personal ending chart <clears throat> primary primary actor by the way and uh, oh, the Omega is sh- actually showcasing the subjunctive in boy eh, oh man let us make it's actually like the subjunctive of exhortation okay so that's just the deal hi my love so boy eh, oh man's not here though it just says God ape and uh, hot the us and God said or uh, and said uh, God Okay, and then uh, as uh, uh, ka moment, uh, ka moment, and so that's just it. Uh, anthro, uh, anthropa, uh, uh, kat e kana, kat e kana hemon, kath amoy o sin, hemon. Now the hemon is the us. In our image and in our likeness, you understand. Now, in Hebrew, you have "nu" there. You saw that there has "nu" in the word for uh, image, our image, and "nu" in the word for our likeness. Okay, meaning, uh, you know, "nu," if you will, whatever the case may be. Remember that "nu" means us in Hebrew or our. Okay, over here is "hamon." This is the genitive, a first person, a personal pronoun from the. A plural part of the paradigm uh, is a genitive, hemon. You understand? So that's just as it says. So Kai a pen and said uh, God. So that's just it over there. So um, it's a different word than boy at omen. And I was going to bring you to boy at omen in the um, in the Bible, but it is different from here. But it has a personal endings in the plural, men. And so that stands. At least that stands anyway. All right. Now, let me see if I have anything else recorded here. You understand? Let me see over here. That's that's, that's a video, though. Okay. So let's just see here. Hi, Malo. Hey. Daddy loves you, Malo. Now, um, let's go. Now, that was chapter 1, verse 26. So let's go to chapter 3, verse 22. Okay. That's just the deal. It says over here, Kai Epen Kurias Hateas. It says over here, and said, Lord, in the nominative, Kurias, Hateas. And that's also nominative. Idu. It says, Behold. That's an imperative. Behold. Ege egenen ke ha adam ha my love <laughs> ha adam okay trans that's the transliteration from adam the Hebrew uh, word adam uh, spelled out aleph dalet and and final mem I believe right adam okay. Uh, and it says, uh, let me see, let me get, get back to the, uh, become, okay, the man, like, okay, horse, it says, haste, one, of us is X, hamon, of us is, okay, all right, hamon, which is a, uh, uh, for, it's a first person um, genitive plural, hemon, 
Oke. Okay. So um man has become like one of us or well, us over here is Hamon. So actually you got Hamon uh in a couple of times in verse 26 of chapter 1 of this chapter and then you have, of uh, the chapter 1 and then you have uh, Hamon in chapter 3 for us as well okay now let's go to chapter 11 and verse 7 and let's see a couple of Greek words there okay all right especially the one that says let us go down or let us descend all right now that's going to be probably also in the subjunctive and um, the the mood the mood uh, probably no possibility uh, subjunctive exhortation if you will is found and recorded there or behind the scenes here in, in Genesis chapter 11 verse 7 you understand Let's look at it from the NIV perspective. Gom. <laughs> okay, you have to read it like that. Gom. Let us go down. Okay, let us go down is, 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 is the word that we're going to see. And, Lord willing. And confuse uh, their language or mix up their language. Okay, so uh, they will... Uh, not understand each other okay so just stay there that's all we need now um, the Trinity is either speaking all at the same time I mean you have people singing all at the same time the Bee Gees <laughs> crying out loud song at the same time so what's the big deal but if it's not that right um, then you have one of the members of the Trinity exhorting the other two members we don't know who that was just to say that the logos did it doesn't say that the that uh uh you know the father he wasn't the father at the time but the father, you know that the father did it or whatever the case may be we don't know who did it what we know is that one member of the trinity actually exhorted gave an exhortation to the other two members it's not it's not a command at least in Greek it's not a command you understand what I'm saying it's not a command it's not the mood it's not the imperative mood that's found and recorded here behind the scenes is the, the it's a subjunctive mood is another mood you understand a different moods different tenses different whatever the case may be different strokes from different sort of folks you understand what I'm saying All right so let's look at the Greek behind this text of scripture found and recorded in Genesis chapter 11 verse 7 the last time okay that uh, plur a plural pronoun for God is used okay um, and I believe okay that um, that in, in Hebrew is uh, Nereda Nereda uh, from I think Yada which means to descend, yada, which means to descend. Uh, I hope I got that right, yada. I wonder if it's, let me see, because I have it someplace around here. Let me see, it has to be right after that, right? Let me see. Uh, let us, it's actually a little bit different. It's uh, actually yarad, you know, yarad. Uh, yada actually means like knowledge though so I was that's why I want to look at it because I remember that yada Yoda from Star Wars comes from that incidentally I have a friend Mark from Missouri who doesn't celebrate you know Halloween I don't celebrate it either as a Trinitarian um, who doesn't celebrate uh, Easter his mother his mother his mother's birthday she she passed away though so I mean you know uh, his wife's birth, his birthday, his son's, or whatever the case may be. But you see, Star Wars, there's a little bit of hypocrisy, if you ask me. It's, I love him to death. That's not the, that's not the issue. Okay? It's, not the, it's, not the, it's not the coup de grace. The coup de grace is that you're not celebrating Halloween, okay? 
and I like Star Wars too. I mean, that's the Force will be with you is garbage, but I mean, you know, it's just a cute thing to see, you know, like R two D two C three PO and all that that garbage. You know, I mean, it's, it's okay. I get tolerated. You understand what I'm saying? Um, but the but the problem is, you know, he doesn't see he 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 doesn't you know celebrate Halloween, okay? But he looks at Star Wars. It's the same thing. <laughs> it's basically the same thing. You got masks all over the place in Halloween. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I mean, in Star Wars. You know what I'm saying? The Force. You got that there. So you don't celebrate, you know, Halloween when you're looking at Star Wars. Come on, this is a hypocritical, and that's that's not the only thing that we does it. You know, most likely. You know what I'm saying? All right. So um, the Hebrew word to remind ourselves is actually Yada. Yod with the Kamet. Uh, I'm sorry. I keep I keep on saying that. Yarad, Yarad, Yod with the commits, Resh, which is an R. I'm under the the six, the eight, in uh, three three eight one, and there's a pathak underneath it as an A class, like in the word hat. So you got the two A classes here in Hebrew. You got the T looking thingy, thingy, which which is an A class, like in the word father. The minus looking sign, sort of a uh, uh, diacritic, that's and that stands for an A class, like in the word hat. And then you have the Dalit, uh, the D. Okay, so it's actually Y A R A uh, D. Okay, so I'm, I'm again I'm under on the number three thousand three hundred eighty one. Okay, so let me see the sign. Now let's look at the Greek though. I don't think I took pictures of the Greek though, so I'm gonna have to. Uh, yeah, I don't think I did. Um, so let me go to the Greek Bible here. Okay, I have it in one of my app folders. All right, so let's see if that's not that one. I have the Bible folder actually, and I have it titled Bibles. Okay, so it's right here. Okay, I hope so. Anyway, let me see. Uh, yeah, that's it. All right, now let's look at it now. Um, let's see. Let's see over here. This is a better app. I like this app better than the other one, this other Septuagint one. Exodus. Look at that Greek word, Exodus, for Exodus. Exodus is a Greek word, okay? And Genesis is actually Greek also. Okay, so that's, that's, that's Greek. That's Greek. Now, um, um, uh, I'm just gonna say something. It's very late. It's it's actually, you know, like I think it's like two o'clock in the morning. Okay, I'm surprised I'm not yawning. Um, look at the look at the gamma there. Just just an incidental thing. The gamma is the perfect letter for Genesis for a word like that. Why? That's typifying the gamma is typifying the stem of a plant, and so that's like the root of life, if you will. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like uh, so this is perfect. Each Greek letter means something. Beta, or now it is called theta, in and of itself means divine. Sigma means to synchronize, which is the perfect. Okay, a uh, letter uh, for the future tense, either epsilon sigma uh, or, uh, or just sigma. You understand? The liquids, I believe, has uh, the epsilon sigma uh, morphine for the liquid futures. But, you know, everything means something. Uh, like uh, omega means to emerge or so whatever the case may be. Um, alpha means rising or, you know. Perfect word for Anastasis uh, resurrection, a letter to head of resurrection, and basis means like foundation or whatever the case may be. The beta, I mean, so that's that's you know, so everything means something. And there's a book uh, that I forgot the title of it, but it's uh, if you see it on Amazon, it's a woman with her head. You don't see the complete head, but her one of her fingers is right in front of her lips, saying like. Shh, and is giving all the secrets of the letters, and I think she does a she does a great job in the book. 
you know, I wish I could run another the title for you guys, you know, but maybe what I could do in the appendix, on the second appendix, I'll, I'll take a picture of it from Amazon, and then maybe you can buy it, I'll comment upon it, because it's such a great book. And so I need to go to uh, verse 7, and let's check out, let's check out this Greek here. It says over here, um, yeah, this is it right here, got the bone of this, that's not such um, it says over here, El Fete, El Fete As, okay, Kata Baino, okay, well it's not there, that's from Kata Baino, but Kata Bomen, okay, Kata Bomen means let us descend. Now, Katabaino has that. Let me see uh, if I could just go to, because when uh, I wanted to make sure of this Greek word, you know, it is found in the Greek New Testament, okay, and one stark um, place is actually in Romans chapter 10, who will descend, or oh, whatever the case may be, this is, let me not butcher the scriptures, let me go to it. All right, so let's see here. Um, I think it's this one. And it says over here. All right, let's just go to the beginning of the verse. It says over here, or who, okay, or who, or is the Greek word, okay, a, it's a conjunction. The, the smallest conjunction is that one, one of the smallest ones anyway. Who is tis, okay, as an interrogative, will descend. Okay, look at the, look at the Greek word. Kata be setai. Now that is the future. Future, future, eh, um, middle indicative, okay. Uh, kata is there. And then you have uh, be Setai. Now the sigma between it doesn't drop off. Okay, this is not a liquid. That's why it doesn't drop off. The um, the beta and, and eta are there. Um, alpha lengthen a letter there. The uh, the eta lengthen of the letter alpha. Okay, and, uh, and uh, that usually happens before tense formatives anyway, uh, the, the, the letter lengthens. Then you have your future tense formative sigma there, and then your connecting vowel, and a, a, a middle passive personal ending. Now that tie is from the my side tie deal, methos tie, which is a uh, primary passive, middle passive personal ending. Okay, that's a, that's a middle passive personal ending from the left hand side of that of that chart. Okay, those those boxes. Okay, the other side, the right hand side, contains two boxes as well, up and down, and they contain. Um, if I can remember, they contain uh, uh, sec secondary uh, personal endings. Okay, like the the, the new. And then so on, and then you have uh, <clears throat> and uh, no, I think it's no sigma, no sigma, nothing, and then uh, mente, and then nu. I think that's the I think that's the part line for that, you know, and for the active anyway, for the active secondary active, and then you have another secondary uh, uh, box. You know, that contains the, the secondary passive, like secondary uh, passive, uh, like uh, ta and then all that other good stuff. You know, see what I'm saying? Found a recorder and again a ta, I believe, right? All right, now, um, so let's get back to this. This is over here, will descend. Now, this is in the future, who will descend? Okay, and the will is embedded in the, in the Greek uh, letter sigma, which means to synchronize, like I said before. Katabai, actually, Katabai, Kappa, Alpha, Tau, Alpha, Beta, now they call called Beta, Eta, now they call called Eta with the, with the acute marker. 
Sigma Epsilon Tau, now they score tough. And Alpha Iota, and that diphthong is pronounced eh nowadays. Not high. They got rid of that sound in Modern Greek. You understand what I'm saying? Along with the Omicron and the, and the what was the other one? Um, the E, the I, and the, and the, and the A. No, the Eta, actually. Now they call called Eta. So I just said it right now. Anyway, I've already forgot. <laughs> so let's just say that. No, so, so knowing that this word, okay, is in the future, though. But if you look at the, in the lexical form, and you actually have kata bino. Now, what is that yoda there in the, in, in, in the present? For, well, yoda, I mean, the, 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 you know, you see that it's, it's, I hate to put it like this, but just the present tense forms are sort. I hate to put it like this, but sort of irregular. You see double signas, signas. You see double lambdas. You see, I mean, the present tense in in the verb in, in the verb system, and in the nominative case and the in the in the um, in the noun system are it looks like they're very irregular. They're not. They're regular for you know, you know for themselves. But to compare it with when you compare it with other you know with other tenses and in other cases. Right, um, you know, they're just they just look irregular. They just don't look normal. Okay? And then you see that also in word like hutas. You see, found and recorded in uh, you know in verse two of chapter one of John. When you look at the other ones, you know, tutu, tuto, tutano, whatever the case may be. I mean, it's just it's different, completely different. You know. And Haas and the relative pronoun looks different. It just looks different from everything else, you know. Anyway, um, so you have to be careful with the nominative case and then, uh, you know, uh, and, you know, the present tense and the verb system, you know. Uh, that's just it. But let's, let's look at it again. Now, did I, did I, did I, let me see, what was that? Into, and that's ace. Not to be complete, confused with haze into the abyss, or uh, let me see over here, abyss, uh, bus, uh, busan, abusan, abusan. You see abusan, it's abyss. Uh, it's a noun actually, abusan. Let's see here, uh, busas. Well, that's just it. Now, so let's go to the textual form, however, I hope it's here, and it says over here, El Fete, El Fete, As Catabomen, Catabomen, no accent markers at all whatsoever over here. None whatsoever in this uh, so far as I see in this app, they don't have any accent markers. You see the, the negative there may actually that's interesting. Okay, now, um, so Kata Bowman, okay, let's just look at it. So, um, Kata is the uh preposition there, tag there. Then you have the bait, okay, which is the stem of uh, of that word to descend. Because the omega, the upcoming omega, well, you don't need a personal ending there. The upcoming omega, because, I mean, you know, you have omega, is actually, okay, I lost my place. Where am I at? Okata, Akata, uh, Bowman. The Omega is a, as a subjunctive morphine, okay? And then in this word, anyway, you have Ada for other words, you know. And then you have the personal ending, the primary active personal ending, men, there, as a matter of fact. Okay? So, uh, Kata, Bo, Kata, Bowman. Okay? That's the word that means, okay, so this is easy to remember when you're dealing with the witnesses. Kata, 
kata bomen, kata bomen. That means let us descend. Now remember, I said that、um, nereda means to descend in Hebrew. So you can you know, put the two together. You got nereda according to the Hebrew, and then、uh, kata bomen according to the Greek, and you, you're set. So all you have to tell the witnesses now they have it translated like this, so you don't have any problem with their translation. They just interpret it different、uh, than we do, you know.、Uh, so, which is a big thing, which is a big deal, which is the coup de grace between us, okay, and、uh, the witnesses. Our interpretation is the coup de grace, the key. Okay. Now the men is a plural.、Uh, A、uh, plural personal ending, men. Okay, plural、uh, first person personal ending. Okay, men. So that's where you get, you know, the word us. This is the last portion of this、uh, Hebrew of this Greek word、uh, kata uh, kata、uh, bomen. And so the men is, you know, just remember the men. When you're talking about personal endings, can mean us, us. Okay, so that's just it. And then the Hebrew side of things, I already said that nereda、uh, actually is equivalent to this,、uh, and that's just the deal. Well,、um, that's it for now. I'm gonna do another part because I don't want to wake up my baby. That has to do with、uh, Isaiah. Which is the last pronoun found in the Bible? You know,、uh, it's found.、Uh, you don't need other ones. I mean, you know, you just, that's gravy on the top.、Uh, I mean, you know, Genesis already has you know five, you know, three in one verse actually, verse twenty-six of Genesis chapter one. You understand what I'm saying? So that's just it. Well, please stay tuned. For Isaiah, I'm gonna do it in another segment because it's late. I don't want to wake up my baby like I said before. So、uh, this will stand. I think this will stand good on its own because、uh, it's just so interesting. So I could, you know, put this recording and set it out, you know, kind of like separately, you know, and then join it with the other parts, you know,、um, with the other parts of the study. By the way, okay, the Trinity are not parts of each other. Jesus is not a part of God, or the Holy Spirit is not a part of God, or the other way around. The Father is not a part, okay, of God. They are God. Okay, they are hand. They are one. You understand what I'm saying? And not in agreement, by the way. It doesn't have the Greek word for agreement there in verse thirty of chapter ten of the Gospel of John and the Gospel according to John. The witnesses like to add words, like everything is a relationship, a relationship or something like that. You understand what I'm saying? Like Jesus to Mary, I mean, well, that's Ha in front of Mary. It's name in Greek there, which is actually、uh, found 27 times in the Greek New Testament, I believe.、Uh, not even close to Jesus's name, which is found and recorded 917 times in the Greek New Testament. Even though、um, it's not always from Jesus,、uh, the Lord. See Romans chapter 16. Um. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna set this off on its own, okay? And、um, I just,、uh, and hopefully it'll, it'll be there for, for many, many years until the Lord,、uh, Lord,、uh, come, you know, Lord comes back, okay? For, for everybody else, just stay tuned for、um, another part,、uh, you know, Isaiah chapter. Uh, another part of this video, Isaiah chapter、uh, six, verse eight, and we're gonna check out、uh, the word for us there in the text. Okay, I already looked at it according to the Hebrew, but according to the Greek Septuagint, we're just getting started. This is Angel Kinyonis. Thank you so much for joining me, guys. Again, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, and please leave me a thumbs up and、uh, leave a comment. On the screen. Thank you. Bye. 
Okay, guys, welcome to part three of this just a fascinating study in the Greek Septuagint. Okay, we, we saw some differences here and there uh, with this uh, uh, Greek Bible, so-called uh, Biblos of the Old Testament. And um, we saw in our last study of it, now we're in Isaiah, but in, uh, we're looking at the uh, plural pronouns for God. And we already um, looked at the Hebrew Naase, uh, Mimenu, Nereda, Lanu. And then we're going to look at some other things like, um, you know, uh, Jehovah said to Adonai, or Yahweh said to Adonai, sit at my right hand from Psalm 110 or 109. Um, Psalm Psalms has it at 109 and uh, not 110. 110, I should say. And um, so I broke off because the thing is that the battery was low on my phone. And I kept on dimming off. So uh, I might introduce that as an appendix so you could just you see and enjoy uh, what I recorded anyway in about five minutes. But um, but this is going to be the main the main vein study of Isaiah chapter six verse uh, eight. But we're going to take some time. I've been, uh, so far we have seen okay in um, in uh, and we didn't look at Genesis chapter one verse one because it's not in the plural like the Hebrew is. You know Elohim is plural. Um, if you see, and let me just look at it real, real, real quickly, you know, because we didn't look at it. So I'll go back to Hosea, you know, um, Hosea, I mean, Isaiah, I should say. Um, let me go to Genesis and look at the Greek because, uh, theos is not in the plural. It doesn't say the, the o in the nominal is plural. And that's to avoid, um, problems because you don't want to, you know, because it, it, first of all, it's written in Greek and then, um, even though the, the Greek was written around uh, 300, 300 years of BC, translating the, the Hebrew scriptures, there was there was still uh, false gods, you know, hanging around uh, uh, Greek thinking. So you don't want to say, you know, hoi uh, theoi or anything like that. Let's just read it real quickly before we get into Isaiah because we didn't really touch upon that. It says, Enarche, uh, epoiesen, that's an heiress. Well, we'll look at it. Apoyas and hate as tan urana. That's in the singular, strangely enough, because the Hebrew is you know, hashimayim is in the in the in the in the plural, the the im, you know, kai tain gain. Enarche apoyas and hate as tan urana and kai tain gain. Okay. Now it says over here, enarche. That's a prepositional phrase that's found and recorded, okay, a handful of times in the New Testament. You know, John one one and two. And then you have, I believe, uh, verse 15 of chapter 4 of Philippians and Arche, maybe another time in, um, in the Greek New Testament. So it's only found a few times. Um, but it's very important, um, the contrast uh, between John uh, 1, 1 and 2 and, um, and this verse. Because this has to do with creation. You know, it, it could have said very easily if Jesus was a creature. And you got to, got to tell the witnesses uh, this, uh, uh, so-called Jehovah's Witnesses. Um, it, it could have said, Anarche, epoias and hate as ha lagos. Okay? Anarche, epoias and hate as ha lagos. In the beginning, God created the what? It doesn't say that. It doesn't say in the beginning... Uh, was uh, the angel. It doesn't say in the beginning was Michael. It doesn't say in the beginning was even the sun. You know, the continuous uh, existence of the sun like that, that he was always the sun, not created, but always the sun. It doesn't even say that. And um, and uh, he became the sun. I will be to him a father. He will be to me a, a son. And you see that recorded. Without father, no, uh, without mother, you know, a petron, a, uh, a metron. You see all that recorded in uh, Hebrews uh, 1, 5, and 6, and 5, 5, and 7, 3. You see? So that's just that he wasn't cre created. He, he wasn't a creature. He created Tapanta, all things. Verse 3 of chapter 1 of John, you understand? Enarche. Okay, Enarche. Epoison. Now, Epoison. Epoison is very important here. So let's just, just look at this. Poeo is the epsilon contract uh, verb here. Okay, Poeo. I make. Whatever the case may be. It could be I create. Or, you know, I just make, I make myself to be somebody I make somebody to be somebody. Well, it doesn't necessarily mean create. So be careful when the witnesses use uh, or misuse 
Uh, the same word found and recorded in verse 36 of chapter 2 of Proxus uh, Apostle only Acts of the Apostles. It doesn't mean that he created him, okay, both Lord and Christ. Okay, look at chapter 10. Uh, he, he anointed him. So that's easy, Christ. He made him uh, Christ. But what does it mean he made him Lord? Does it mean does it mean that he created him? No, because the same word poeo is found and recorded around verse 27 of chapter 10 of John's Gospel, like I said in the body of this study, for the Jews complaining that Jesus made himself to be God. Now, he didn't, they, they wasn't saying that he put himself into a test tube and created himself from scratch. It says that he made himself to be somebody, according to, to, to them, that he was not. Okay? So you can, you know, and, and uh, you know, I, the Bible is filled with poeo, and sometimes it means create, and sometimes not. It wasn't catesis. It is no mentioning of catesis for Jesus anywhere that 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 uh, that God the Father or God uh, catesis created Christ. That's a very strict meaning of uh, that. That word is very strict, and narrowed only to create. Catesis is found nowhere. For Jesus being a creature, Catesis, I'm talking about, you know. Now, um, I mentioned that, um, you know, in verse, in verse 26, Catesis uh, may be there, but you know, uh, it's, it's very hard to tell with with uh, ancient words, you know, uh, with Kappa and uh, Alpha and Mu there. It just means to create, but Catesis means to make, to create strictly. So I'm just saying that in my other, in in other part of the study. I did mention that that uh, that um, the catesis might might be there, but whatever the case may be, that word does mean to create, but it's not um uh, it's not um the the, the other subjunctive uh boy at omen. This is an aorist tense. The epsilon is here. The augment is before the consonant. That's like our ed in English, but before a a what that begins with a consonant. Because the augment is, is showing time. It's showing past time, by the way. So you have the augment. Then you have uh, uh, poi A, okay? Um, the eta uh, before the transformative um, uh, lengthen the epsilon there. And that's a normal thing. Uh, and then the sigma and epsilon in the third person singular is a very normal thing as well. Just like kappa epsilon for the perfect tense in some... In some, in some uh, in some instances, <clears throat> sometimes it's just kappa, you know, and sometimes it's just sigma, you know, like that, you know. Um, but this is sigma epsilon for the for the first person uh, singular, and then you got the new there. Okay, so that's just so that's just it. Um, I made a I made a sort of a grouping of these things. Uh, you see. Um, the present, the, the the future, and the perfect. Okay, using primary, uh, active, uh, primary active and passive um, constructions. It's only when you get to the aorist tense and the perfect tense do you see. Okay, the second uh, primary active uh, personal endings. So that new there is is that. Um, so so we have NRG, RG. Uh, and is spelled out that was a proposition um, showing the relationship of, of between two words and um, so that's just a deal so it's showing um, what God did in the beginning of time so the relationship between our K and, and God is here and uh, and is spelled out capital epsilon uh, and then uh, small nu now they's called ni Arche, nowadays pronounced Arche in modern Greek, Alpha Rho, Chi, Eta, nowadays called Eta, like I said before, that's in the dative case, uh, the prepositional phrase, uh, F, um, N, Arche is here, the object, the object of the preposition, Arche, preposition is N, one of maybe like 17 small prepositions in Greek, um, and so that's just that's in a dative case. It's taking it is always ta is always taking a dative case uh, uh, n. Um, a poison, like I said, created. Okay, hot the as he's the subject of the of the verb, and it's the subject nominative. He's is this a regular subject uh, 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 nominative use that this is a very common thing. I should say. Energy, a is in the nominative singular. It doesn't say hoi te oi. 
to avoid, you know, um, you know, the, to avoid uh, a sort of idea that many gods were involved in creation. Okay, so I, I think that keeping it in the singular is 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 good because you have you have uh, Elohim in the singular, you know, El in the singular, uh, a Hebrew word for God rather, in the singular El. Psalm one or two has it one time El, so the Aleph uh, Sere and then Lamet. So I mean, you have the singular and the um, plural in 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 Hebrew. So why not have it in Greek? You know, uh, but. You know, it does avoid it does avoid um, mythology. Hatheas, hatheas, um, Greek mythology. Hatheas tan urana, and that's in the singular. Okay, so the the full paradigm in the, in the singular is uh, uranas, uranu, urano, uranan, uranoi, uranon, and uranois, uranus. I mean, it's full paradigm for the singular and the plural. Um, but this is in the singular, and that's kind of strange because in in the Hebrew it's actually in the in the plural heavens actually. Kai, now they pronounce Ketain Gain, the earth. Interestingly enough, before we go to uh, Isaiah, there's a word here that means invisible. He de ge, uh, ge which means earth. Um, let's see, hopefully it's in, in this Greek Septuagint, though. Skatia is darkness. Wait a minute. What's, what's going on? My baby's waking up, so I better go. I have to make her milk. She's not fully awake yet. She's just groaning right now. Let me see if this has um, aratas here, though. It might not have aratas. Yep. Uh, Spirit of God. Now, uh, <laughs> the Jehovah's Witnesses are going to have to translate this, okay? I saw a spirit of a God hovering over the water. So whatever the came moving over the waters, so because it says over here... Panuma without the ta and Theu without the tu. Okay, so I mean, if you, they're gonna have to be honest with themselves, they're gonna have to, you know, translate this in there. If they were translating from it, you know, um, you know, a spirit of a god. That's the same thing going on, I believe, in Matthew chapter three, that they will have to translate. And now this, they, they'll probably say to you, "Well, we don't have to translate this because this is Greek, and we translate from the Hebrew." Well, how about the Greek translating from the Greek and the, you know, the baptism account of Jesus? You still have the same thing going on there. Okay, Panuma Theu, in in most of the manuscripts, right? So, what's your translation there? Uh, I sw I saw a spirit of a God descending on Jesus, or whatever the case may be. Can't get away with it there from Matthew. You might get away with it here, but it's the same thing going on. If if you were to use the thinking of the Jehovah's Witnesses, that something doesn't have an article, and then something is indefinite because it doesn't have an article. They just don't understand that there are ten different ways that Dan Wallace that a Greek noun can be definite without the Weak demonstrative, demonstrative without the article. Okay, you understand? That's a very basic, common thing. It doesn't have uh, invisible here, though. Amar, Amar Fas Kai, Eremas Kai, Katas, Darkness, Epiapan, the the face, oh, Prasopu, the face. Panim in, in Hebrew. Taste uh, Buso, face of the deep. In the spirit of God. Oh, I keep on doing that. In the spirit of uh, Let me see, it's verse 2. Where, where am I at again? Panuma, the spirit of God. Hey, so frustrating. I wish there was a button that would, you know, just stop that, you know? Hudaton of the waters in the plural. I don't see aratas here, so this Greek Septuagint is different from the one that I'm accustomed of using. Um, but uh, uh, other Greek Septuagints, okay, has aratas, which means invisible, okay. And I never see, okay, um, aratas parousia, invisible presence or uh, invisible coming anywhere for Jesus in the Bible. That's what I'm trying to say, anyway. Even though it's not here. It would have been delicious if it was here, but it's just gravy on the top of our study anyway. So Jesus uh, coming invisibly, found and recorded in their, uh, you know, Sign of the Son of Man uh, magazine, or what do you want to call it, uh, article uh, way back in uh, 74. I think I bought the 74 issues in one book form, and they had things about drinking. 
Okay, uh, what are you going to be concerned about drinking and other things? So if you see the articles based in 1974, the collection of them, I don't know if you can still get them on Amazon. I had uh, 74 and 75. Uh, most of their articles, they don't even talk about the coming of Jesus. You would think if they would really believe what they're teaching, they, all of the articles of the, you know, like so, like maybe 24 articles or whatever it was. I, I think it was like 12, 24 articles, right? Would be all about Jesus' return. And not, you know, about drinking and about this and about that or whatever the case may be. You understand what I'm saying? So anyway, let's, let's go to let's go to Isaiah now before my, my baby fully awakes. And then I have to do a part four. Um, we looked at that. We looked at, um, <clears throat> we looked at, um, let us make, um, uh, poeo men. There's another word there, I believe, in, uh, in, uh. Greek Septuagint in, uh, in this one though, but anyway, we we we'll, we'll, we could we could rehash everything later, you know. Uh, time is of, of the essence, so let's go to let's go to. Um, isn't this frustrating though? Let's go to. Um, oh, that's the book of Job. Job. So uh, Isaiah's after that. Uh, Ecclesiastes right there, and then there's uh, Isaiah right here. So let's go to chapter six. And then I apologize if I have to go. Um, you won't really notice it because I'll be editing um, anyway, you know. So let's just look at it. It says in verse eight, and I uh, heard, okay, I heard, if you could say, uh, and Greek word chi ekusa, that's an aorist tense again, sigma and alpha. It's pointing out the aorist. It'll be ecusa, ecusas, ecuse, like that, you know, for the present. Ecu and then you have see the, the augment there, the eta lengthening the alpha, um, because it, it, it begins with a with a vowel, so the vowel is lengthened. Um, and that's the augment there, eta. It's like our ED in English, if, if roughly speaking, you know. Kai is sh showcasing time. Kai, and that's for, this is first aris, by the way. Sigma alpha, that's first aris. Aku is the stem, and then the sigma alpha is the, the aris tense morphine tagged uh, after this. Uh, kai ekusa, I heard. Ekusa is heard. Uh, talking about past time, it has to augment. Uh, tain phonane, and that's a new accusative case. The article tain, that's a feminine accusative article, and phonane is, is, is feminine accusative, singular. Not voices, but voice. Um, and so the, the, the case of the case is the case of limitation is limiting what kind of voice, who, whose voice this belongs to, or who's, what voice is it is limiting to, to the Lord only. He saw, he heard the voice of the Lord. Tain a uh, phonane, spelled out phonane, spelled out phi, omega, nu, now they's called ni, eta, now they's called eta, nu, of the Lord. Tu kuriu, that's in the genitive. Full paradigm for, uh, the Lord. Is um, um uh, kurias kuriu kurio uh, kurian kurioi drop in there kurie in the, in the vocative evocative whatever uh kurio kurion kuriois and kurius that's that's uh this is a, is a first declension of a word it's talking about it's translating the Lord, uh, probably uh Yahweh in, in the Hebrew. Okay, the voice of the Lord saying legantes. Now this is a participle, and uh, so that's just the deal. Now this is this 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 participle. I believe. Okay, I believe is a, is a genitive uh, case ending there. Case genitive case ending. Um, looks like nominative though, right? But I believe is a case ending in the genitive. Okay, legantes. And so leg is the stem that's that has the word say there, I say right, and then the omicron is a pronunciation or connecting vowel, and the new tau is a, is a participial morphine. But the thing about the the participial uh, construction is that you have a verbal construction, the verbal system, tagged with the with the um, with a case ending with a noun system. So you have the two things right up in the center. So you have morphemes that will showcase the participial constructions. You look, you know, and then uh, Omicron Tau, Nu Tau, and stuff like that. Mena, Mene, Huia, uh, Usa, you know, own, own uh, nominative construction. You see it in Haon. 
And so the case ending is with this. So it's, it's kind of tricky. You have to know the both. Like on to saying, that's a participle, is continuous. Saying, okay. Athena, who, thelo, will I? Thelo means will I. Um, will I apastele, sen? That's in the third person, as a matter of fact. Uh, who will I send? And Greek word kai, who, tis, thele, uh, will, will, who, pa, go, uh, for, the, uh, us, and this, he, must. That's in the, from the paradigm, uh, from the um, first person pronoun plural part of the paradigm. He, mes, he, mon, he, mean, he, mas. This is accusative. He, mas. Okay, ego mu mu eme is a singular part of the paradigm, but he mes, he mes, he mon, he mean, he mas, and this is this, 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 this a plural part of the paradigm. So, uh, and I think you have the word ago in here, in uh, hu page, and which is which is third person, as a matter of fact. Hu pago, hu page, is hu page, like that, you understand what I'm saying? Hu page, you have the word ago in here. It's just like, it's like, um, uh, let us go from here. I think in the New Testament, either like, I don't know, uh, chapter 14 or 15 or whatever, ends with uh, let's, let's, let's go. Jesus saying, let us depart from here. That's the word I go in there with some other uh, neat things. Hupage will go uh, for us. Humas. Then, Tate, okay, Epa. Uh, said, uh, behold, and this is an imperative, idu, behold, apastelan, send me, apastelan, send me, me is from the ego paradigm, send me. Now, um, the us here is not lanu, that's, that's Hebrew, okay, for us is Hebrew, lanu, that's easy, nu means us in Hebrew. But in the Greek Septuagint here, Hamas is doing the same thing that Hamon did. You understand? In our image and our likeness, found and recorded in verse 26 of chapter 1 of Genesis. And I have to leave, guys. Um, Hamas is the same thing. It's, 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 it's showcasing the word us. It's, um, it's, it's, the, it's a plural a pronoun, a first-person plural pronoun. So you have Hamas, you have Hamon uh, sprinkled in there, and then you have men uh, sprinkled in there uh, sometimes. You see it in uh, verse 7 of chapter, uh, what's the kata, what is it, kata bomen, kata bomen in this uh, Greek Septuagint, kata bomen, for let us go, let us go down. Us is, is, is the personal ending, the primary act of personal ending men is doing a job of us. So you have Hamon doing it, Hamas doing it, men doing it. So you have a whole bunch of stuff sprinkled with the us deal in the Greek Septuagint. You understand but i have to go now i'll uh, stay tuned for okay for sort of review of everything um i, I think after i look at zachariah uh, chapter 2 verses 8 and 9 in hebrew probably verses 12 and 13 but i have to check that out you know in physical bibles you see sometimes in verses 12 and 13 um you know jehovah sent jehovah and also i want to look at psalm 110 you understand sometimes in greek Septuagint, it's psalm 109 uh saying uh the lord said unto my lord now i just want to say what right off the bat if jehovah's witnesses say well why isn't it you know why is it why does it say my lord well he's a redeemer he's the redeemer that's why it says my lord it's no, it's no difference the lord said unto my lord you know uh yahweh said to adonai my lord my the lie my lord statement doesn't lessen him being lord it just means he's a personal lord he sees he has to do with redemption Okay, he has to do with redemption. That's why it says, my Lord. But we'll look at that in our, in our next study. Okay, uh, our next uh, 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 part. Um, upcoming now will be, uh, God willing, uh, um, a look at Zechariah chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. Thank you. Also, this will be uh, set apart on its own. Uh, I think it, it deserves to be out, out on its own um, on YouTube. Thank you, guys. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Please give me a thumbs up and please leave a comment on the screen. Stay tuned for another part. Thanks. 
Hi everybody, now welcome to part 4 of the study, okay, and uh, this is the second to last part, God willing, and that's just the deal. Now we come to Psalm, which is over here in the Greek Septuagint, okay, Psst. okay, that's a PS, uh, the anchor looking letter, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, a weapon in the hands of the false god Poseidon, the god of the sea. Okay, that's how that's how strange that is, but that you know, so weapon as a trident. And uh, anyway, you got the Alpha, Lambda, uh, Uf, so on the Mu, I should say, Mu, Omicron, nowadays called Omicron, Mu, nowadays called me, going backwards, and Yoda there, last letter, Psalm 110. Now, this Septuagint actually is different. I am seeing some differences from this Greek Septuagint than other Septuagint. I'm not saying that all of the Septuagint are not the same, we don't have the original anyway. Okay, so Tugent was written like, you know, 300, 200 B.C., whatever the case may be. And so um, there's different accounts of that. I mean, I mean you know, um, so psa, psalmoi, okay, is psalms. So it's in the plural, actually. So you got the iota there. So this is in the plural. Okay, so whenever you see like an anchor-looking letter or trident-looking letter, you're most likely looking at the psalms. Uh, this over here says uh, Psalm, as in the singular, uh, after one, Psalm of David to uh, David, to David. Um, and then it says a pen over here, which is third person. Remember, Epo was says I say, right? Um, a pen said. Okay, the Lord, ha kurias, that's in a nominative case, so that's a subject nominative, that's easy. Pras, and that means to, uh, here, okay, pras, to. In Hebrew, it's probably el, uh, el there is it's probably present there. Pras, uh, tan kurian, he's the object of the address. So you have over here, uh, apen ha kurias, pras, tan kurian. Okay, so two of the constructions are here in the singular. Um, the other ones are uh, kuriu and kurio, and throw in there kurie, right? Ha kurias pras tan kurian mu. Now let's take care of that right away. Why is is this a lesser lord than the other lord mentioned here? It's not another lord; it's the same lord, but I mean, you know, in person. Then uh, the other person mentioned here and recorded, no, it's just as my Lord, because he is the Redeemer. The Father did not redeem, okay, by his own blood, or he wouldn't. Let's just look at it from their point of view. The Father is not going to die upon the cross. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Said Jesus upon the cross, Okay. Uh, why has that forsaken me, right? So he is the redeemer. He's the one who has that, that task of redeeming, not the Father. Remember that the price was paid to the Father by Jesus Christ our Lord. So that's why I say the Jehovah's Witness is always like downplaying, oh, well, this second Lord is not really the Lord because it says my Lord. But yeah, he, he, he's, he's the Lord. He made them both Lord and Christ. He didn't create him, both Lord and Christ, okay? Poi eo there, that uh, epsilon contract of uh, poi eo uh, doesn't strictly mean to create like katissis uh, or create like katissis uh, means. Katissis is strictly, almost 100% has, has to do with creation. Katissis is nowhere to be found, like I said, in the body of the study for Jesus being a creature. Okay, but I already mentioned that though. So let's go on without interruption. It says over here, Psalmas, Psalmas to David. Epen hakurias pras atan kurian mu. Kathu said, okay, Kathu ek at, that's the genesis of, this is the genesis of a place right here, I believe. Um, Dexon, okay, at my right hand, or at my right, and mu is my. Uh, uh, Heosu, until, uh, Feso, and that's, I think, in the, that's in the future. I will, uh, it says over here, tus, tus, ech, ech, thrus, 
um, the enemies. This isn't a plural. That's an accusative plural, as a matter of fact. Enemies of your, from the susu soy paradigm, su. That's su there, that's in the genitive. Uh, um, uh, your enemies uh, who, uh, who pa dian, a footstool. Okay, um, ton, uh, ton, pardon. And pardon is a uh, feet, that's in the plural, in the genitive plural, as a matter of fact. And so again, is the genitive here. So the only thing that, that you know, Jehovah's Witnesses, which I want and complain about, is that really Jesus is not, he's, he wasn't Jesus at the time, you know, because this was written before the incarnation, you know, um, uh, written and recorded in several places in the New Testament, especially in, in, in the Old Testament also, but in the New Testament, especially in verse 14 of chapter 1 of the prologue of the Gospel of John. And, you know, uh, and the Word became flesh, and the Word became flesh, uh, let me see how it goes, like, uh, Gai, Ha, Lagas, Egeneta, Sarx, or Sarx, Egeneta, I don't know which one comes up, I forgot which one comes first, um, and, and, and uh, tabernacled and you know Kai Eskenosen uh, that's a, a first heiress there third person singular Eskenosen uh, tabernacled among us and we beheld his glory so I mean that's just that's just the deal the only thing that that I see that the witnesses complain about it just says it is uh, you know the Lord my Lord and so when it says my Lord it's, he's a less of a Lord than the Lord recorded um, in you know, under the umbrella of ha, uh, Hakurias, uh, Yahweh, because one says Jehovah and the other one says Adonai. Well, well, Adonai is almost exclusively for God in the, in the, in the Old Testament. And Mark from Missouri agreed when I was debating him on 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 something about this issue. He agreed that he agreed about Adonai, and he's a Jehovah's Witness. So I mean, those are exclusive titles for God. Uh, especially Yahweh, I agree, and Echyek, uh, those two are exclusively for God, 100%. Uh, tiled and sealed, you know, sealed, uh, signed, sealed, and delivered. You understand? Lock, stock, and barrel. You know, look, high, look uh, hook, line, and sinker. You understand what I'm saying? But Adonai is like that. It's ex almost exclusively for God, if not exclusively in the Old Testament. Okay? So, um, my Lord, it just simply means to me, to me, um, my Redeemer. The Lord said unto my Redeemer, unto my Lord, who's the Redeemer, who's who bought me and paid for me. And as a matter of fact, he would know this because he he already wrote Psalm 22 before this uh, Psalm. He wrote Psalm 22 about uh, in the Greek Septuagint and in, in some Septuagints it's Psalm uh, 21. Uh, you understand? Some some Psalms are stuck together. It's like a um, and that's why there's a difference uh, between the numbers and things like that. There's always there's also subtuagents that are corrected subtuagents. You know, uh, the corrected the numbers, corrected this, corrected that. That's, that's fine with that, you know. As long as they don't go backwards and, and borrow from the New Testament and try to correct, uh, try to correct the old, because sometimes... Um, or, 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 or even try to correct uh, the... Greek Septuagint um, with the with the Jewish scriptures because there are differences. There are differences. Like I believe something says uh, it says something about um, the, the the iron being poured in the soul, different than something else uh, uh, of Joseph. You know, like like it's just the suffering. I, I think Barnhouse uh, brought that out in the Hebrew is quite different than the Greek Septuagint. And, 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 and in fact. Sometimes the apostles and in, in, in Jesus, our Lord, quoted from the Greek Septuagint to such a degree that they quoted from the Greek Septuagint more than 300 times. You understand? So uh, <laughs> there's an airplane flying by, and, and then the kids make a big deal because of the airplane. You know, little tiny airplanes pass by. It's a big deal here in the Philippines. I wonder if it said Happy Valentine's Day on it. It would be nice because Valentine's Day is so bloody cold here in the Philippines. It really is. Now, I mean, this is this is this is a, a small village, so I mean, you're not going to see a whole bunch of Valentine's Day things. But Valentine's in, in America is a very big deal, you know. 
and over here, I mean, people don't even see couples holding hands uh, while they're walking. It's just, a, it's just a different country, you know. It really is. I miss my country, the United States of America. But getting back to, getting back to this though, you know. Um, uh, let me see if I could just comb through here. Uh, Psalms, uh, uh, Psalmas, uh, Psi, Alpha, Lambda, uh, Mu, Omicron, Final Sigma. And then two is a genitive singular article. David uh, is a different spelling from the David, David in the in, a, in the New Testament uh, Greek scriptures. You know, so you got the triangle there. So it's a right, right, you know below the one a little bit you know to the side, but yeah, it's a, the triangle is a, is a D delta delta in in Greek, and that's David's name. A B I sort of a D kind of like a musical sort of a note thingy. So it's just, you know, the only thing hard is to detect the the D in David's name because it's a triangle. You know, the D is a triangle. A pen is uh, Epsilon, capital Epsilon, um, Iota, P Epsilon, Nu. The V looking letter is not a V, it's an N. And Hakuria, you can see the Q, U, and an R. It looks like a, a P, but it's a R in Greek. Rho. Don't say Rho, that's lazy for the Greeks. Iota, Omicron, Final Sigma, so that looks like an IOS. And pros, again, you know, you have the R there that looks like a P, though. That's the problem. And then the P doesn't even look like a P. It looks like a stool. But it's an actual uh, part of a building, a uh, part of a temple. And then a P, a P, Rho, Omicron, Final Sigma. And then you have Tan Kurian, because he's the object of the address. Is um, He said it to him exclusively. The accusative case is the case of limitation. Just as just like the genitive, but the genitive uh, limits as the kind. On the other hand, the uh, accusative case. While on the other hand, <laughs> accusative case limits as to extent, the extent, the extent of the hearing. Uh, chapter twenty-two, verse nine, the praxis apostolonia acts of the apostles. You know the extent of the hearing. And so on, I'm saying, hakuria sa prasatan akurian mu. So the mu. Is 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 in the, in the you know uh, genitive of possession, um, genitive of relationship. I mean you know it's just you have to wrestle with that one a little bit. Which one it is? Genitive of, of description. I mean you know, akatu um, and that's a sit. Uh, um, that's a, that's an imperative. I think that's an imperative. There, I think akatu is an imperative there. Kappa, Alpha, Theta, now they're called Theta, Omicron, Upsilon, now they're called uh, Epsilon. At is uh, Ek there, a little preposition. Uh, Dexion, uh, Delta, Epsilon, C, Yelta, Omega, Nu, and that's in the genitive, I believe, in the genitive. Plural, like okay. uh, Dexion. Um... Um, I uh, I gotta wrestle with that one. I don't think that's no. That's not. Wait a minute. That's uh, that um, I don't know if that's a genitive plural. I take that back. I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I I forgot about that one. And then mu uh, my so that's uh that's my there. Uh, he also. Uh, theso. And that's in the future, I believe. That's in the future tense. Theso. Um, your enemies tus ech thrus of you su uh, hupa padian hupa padian ton padon su your feet. Is that's in the plural? That's definitely in the plural, and there's a genus plural right there. Pardon, that's uh, ge that's ge definitely in the plural. I I don't see any other problem except you know um that the witnesses might you know they'll say this is not the Trinity because there's two members. Um, remember that the gospel has to do with highlighting uh the father son relationship, okay. I mean, you know, the Trinity is splattered all over the pages of the Bible. I mean, you know, for, uh, first um, you have uh, first, first Corinthians chapter 12, verses 4, 5, and 6. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 4, 5, and 6. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 14. 
and you know this other trinitarian the trinity passages of scripture recorded um i think hebrews 9 14 i already said that and they got other ones like a second corinthians chapter 13 verse 14 you have a whole bunch this is you know of course the famous one in matthew's gospel and then you have the ones in genesis and we went through those in this study okay genesis 1 1 genesis 1 26 genesis 3 22 11 7 uh 18 verse 3 Tetragrammaton is found 10 times there in a chapter. And so that's just the deal. One Lord goes to heaven and two uh, lords go to uh, persons, that is, um, go to um, Sodom and Gomorrah. So that's just the deal. All right. Now, um, so let's go to Zechariah. Okay, let's go to Zechariah here because I promised. And, and since my baby's sleeping, I can go to Zechariah quite easily hopefully i mean i say that and then she's gonna wake up um let me see if i can find zachariah and it's right here zacharias zacharias right there so it's a small book but this is weighty and powerful let's go to chapter two now first of all let's go to chapter one because i want you to see something as a jehovah's witness if you're a jehovah's witness okay so that's over here ento ento uh ag ag do -o. Ado o meni to to du tero to du tero ete tu da Dario <laughs> giving you the you know the king uh, again 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 a uh, lagas okay word and uh, this is lagas uh, so uh, lagas is right here lagas uh, kuriu but it's, it's, it's an altar. So you're going to say the word of a Lord. I mean, are you going to say that? Uh, to uh, Zechariah, plus uh, Zechariah, Tan Huyan, son of uh, uh, Barachiu, or Barakiah, son, or Huyu, that's in the Genesis. This is a Genesis of a relationship. Son of uh, Ido. Okay, uh, Tan Prophetin. And Legon saying, that's a nominative, as a matter of fact, saying nominative construction, uh, case ending, case ending there in a, in a nominative. A legacy stem and, uh, and then own is uh, the participial morphing and a nominative. And a tau and, uh, and uh, was, was, was dropped off. And so that's just the deal. So, I mean, uh, Zechariah is a prophet. It says it right over here. So I want to let you know. What's coming up is a prophecy of the Lord. Okay, the word of the Lord came to Zechariah. It says over here, Lagas Kuriu, the word of the Lord, to Pras Sacharian. Okay, so so this is a this is a prophecy, and you better listen to it. That's what I'm saying. Let's go to chapter two and look uh, how uh, Zechariah talks about Jehovah sending Jehovah. So let's hopefully find it in verse eight. You understand? So the Lord is speaking in verse 8. I hope it's in verse 8 because some Hebrew scriptures has it in verse 9. So I don't know if this just follows suit. But we're going to see. Dioti, dioti, huto, lege, says hakurios. So hakurios is saying something. Okay, it says over here, ton, ton. Duna me on, duna me on meta, attain a daxen after glory, takes on me a epe stele sent to, okay, ta ethne the nation, okay, ta a, a, what is this, a poi, a poi, a, Asas ele ele ela. I'm using a magnifying glass over here. Ele ela desan. This is an aorist tense, I believe, right over here. Diati astis angize angize. Uh, esas and gise attain 
Karen says over here to a thalmo to a thalmo out to now is what I want you to see over here is that the Lord is speaking okay he he, he said that uh, someone sent he said he's gonna he uh, let me see let me see again over here for a second. It says over here, Lege, it says, uh, Lege, Lege Hakuria. So the Lord is speaking right over here. It's very important to note that the Lord is speaking. Tetragrammaton is in the Jewish scriptures right over here and in verse 9. In some Jewish Bibles, you see it in verses 12 and 13, this, this, this account. You understand? Um, where am I at? I just lost my place again. Uh... Where is Lege? Where's Lege? Uh, where Lege is? Oh, Le okay, Lege. That's a uh, third person. As a matter of fact, Lego, Lege, Lege, Ha Kurian, Legame, Legate, Legusi, right? Okay. American Ha Kuria Stone, Duna Meon. Duna Meon, I think that's the Lord of Hosts. The Lord of Hosts, Duna Meon. After the glory, after glory. Me ape stele sent. He has sent. Okay, now uh, to uh, the nations. So he he's saying that someone sent him, but you don't get to see who sent him until you read verse nine. So the tetragrammaton is in the background here in the Jewish scriptures. Um, this is a translation of that. So just know that the Lord is speaking. That's very important. That the Lord is speaking. He said that somebody sent him. Now let's see who sent him in verse nine. That's very important. Diati, diati, e do behold, ego I okay thelo will okay sese ten chera. I will wave my hand. I think it says over here mu epi epi ep okay alta. Kai Thelusin, Thelusin. Este la fu la furan es tu so du du le usantas slaves. Alta Kai. Telete, and you will know que no ries que no rise. That's in the future, I believe. Then you will know that hati the Lord. Okay, that the Lord don do na me on of host me, and that's me. Apestauke. Uh, well, that's that's another uh, Greek Septuagint. Uh, apestele. Apestele. Actually, in another Greek Septuagint, it's apestauke me. It's in the perfect tense. Has sent me. The capital Epsilon there, uh, first perfect. Uh, but this doesn't have that. Um, has sent me. Okay. It doesn't have the, the same exact, you know, uh, 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 writing there. You know what I'm saying? So he already he already was speaking in verse eight. The Lord is speaking in verse eight. Jehovah is speaking. Jehovah or Yahweh, right? Is speaking in verse eight. Now he he's speaking further here, and he says that the Lord of hosts has sent him. So the Lord of hosts is speaking because it says that, right? And it says very clearly in verse nine. Okay. That, some, that the Lord of hosts sent him. So the Lord of hosts is speaking, saying that the Lord of hosts sent him, or Jehovah is speaking, saying that he was sent by Jehovah. Now, are there two Jehovahs? No. But there the, are the, the, the three persons to God. And two are spoken right here uh, as one sending, uh, are spoken here, and one is, one is saying, or one said, that Jehovah sent him. So Jehovah is saying that Jehovah sent him. It's indisputable. And you can give me the stories about the angels and stuff like that in this chapter. I know, I agree. I, I, I you know, I, I know that they're 
messengers here and things like that. But it does say in the midst of this that Jehovah's in Jehovah. Jehovah's Witnesses, said Ted Densher in his book, says that Jehovah's Witnesses uh, have trouble with this text. They can't explain it. They can't, they can't deny it. Jehovah did send Jehovah. That's just all there is to it. The said the Grammaton appears twice here, one, one in each, each text. You understand what I'm saying? Let's look at the English real quick before I finish it, before I close. Let's get the NASB out here. It happens to be one of my favorite Bibles. Is, this the most, is it the most accurate? No. But this is the KJV. But is that the KJV? I, I think it was the KJV, right? I just... So I think I got the wrong one. Yeah, New King James. So let's just check it out anyway and see, see what it does. Uh, this is Genesis. So let me see. Uh, Joel, let me see here. Uh, Sephaniah. Uh, okay, all right. I mean, uh, Zechariah is right here. Hopefully, it has it. I'm familiar with the NASB and the, and the NIV in this in, in this at this point. So hopefully, the King, the New King James, doesn't disappoint. You understand? Verse three. Let me see. The print is large for me because I am legally blind. I see everything small. That's my problem. And it says over here, it says, For thus says, for thus says the Lord of hosts. Of hosts. Okay. Now, the Lord is speaking right here. He sent me after glory. He sent me after glory to the nations. Okay. Uh, which... Uh, uh, plundered you for he who uh, touches you uh, touches uh, the apple of his eye so the lord is saying that that he was sent to the nations the set of ground town is here now and i should and i should get that in a second in hebrew for uh surely i will uh, shake my hand. I will shake my hand against okay them, and uh, they uh, shall become spoiled or plundered for uh, their uh, servants. Then you will know. Then you will know that the Lord, the Lord is speaking. Then you will know that the Lord of hosts, okay, has sent me. The Lord is speaking there. So this is good enough. You know, the New King James Bible. I mean, it's, you know, it's, 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 you know what I'm saying? NASB has this and on and on it goes that the Lord sent the Lord. But maybe you don't agree with that. I don't know why. So let's go to the Hebrew. Okay, let's, let's pick up a Jewish Bible here. You understand? Let me see. Uh, let's get this over here. And that's just it. So this is Romans. I was doing something in the study based on that. So let's go to Zechariah. Zechariah here. Zephaniah. Zechariah is right here recorded. Okay, you understand? And let's get chapter 2 and let's get verse 8 here recorded. I think there's a hymn in verse 10. It says that Jehovah will dwell with his people, I think in his chapter, you understand? Well, let's, let's check this out. For, okay, key, uh, thus, okay, uh, and that's, anyway, it's so blurry, my magnifying glass, uh, call, uh, Amar, oh, I'm sorry, yeah, Amar, oops, says, Okay, so over here it says Amar, I spell that Aleph with the Kamet, uh, Mem with the Pathach, and Resh. Uh, over here, it's the grammar times right here. Yod, Hey, Wow, Hey. Forget about the, you know, the, the Shoah and then the Kamet, that's, that's something else. Okay? From somewhere else, you know what I'm saying? From Adonai, probably. Yod, Hey, Wow, Hey. Or. Hand behold, nail behold. This is the story of the cross, right? In the Tetragrammaton. This is the, the third person form of Haya, the, third, uh, the Tetragrammaton. Mounts uh, says in his lexicon. And and, uh, and uh, Echiak is the first person form of Haya, as a matter of fact. 
So the Tetragrammaton is here. The, time, the Tetragrammaton is here, Zechariah chapter 2. It says, it says the Lord. And then what does he say? Well, let's check it out, though. It says, a Lord of hosts, though. This is a adjective describing a Lord. Uh, Sade, uh, Bet, Aleph, uh, Wow, and then Tau. With uh, diacritics uh, sprinkled throughout. Okay. Uh, 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 I'm sorry. Uh, that's a T-S. Tsa, Saba, Ot. Saba, Ot. With a, that's a T-S. It looks like a Y underneath the S in, in hosts. But that's a T-S. That's a Sade. And then you have a final Sade in the, in the end of a word like an edit. You know, an uh, uh, of. Hort of hosts. After it says over here, aha. Okay, uh, after I think it's a meta in, in, in Greek, right? After glory, and it's over here is kabod for glory. After glory, it says he he sent he sent. It says over here. Now, um, now, uh, Shalachani, Shalachani, and the, the law of Shaliach actually comes from this Hebrew uh, word, but the Lord sent him directly, though. But that just reminds me of that. And to the, to the, does it say Goyim here? Let me see. Let me see, it says, uh, yep, <laughs> Goyim, to the ha, ha Goyim, uh, the Gentiles or the nations. Now, let's continue to read here, okay, in the next verse, okay. Now, I went that way uh, for surely, let me see if it's, if it's the, surely I will shake, for surely I will shake, Okay, my hand. Okay. Uh, yadi. I will shake my hand. Let me see over here. I will shake my hand uh, against them. Against them. Let's continue to read over here. And they shall become, okay, wait for a second, they shall become uh, for uh, their uh, servants. Okay, then you will know, and probably Yada is here. Yada, see? See Yada? Yada is there. Uh, that's where you get the word Yoda from, probably, in Star Wars. Yada. See Yada over here to know? Uh, Yod Kamet with the Dalit and the Pathach and the Ayan. Then you will know that, okay, that's key. That, see, Yahweh, it says over here, Yahweh, Yod Hey Wow Hey, Ah, Yahweh, okay, of whole, Sabaot, Sabaot, start with the T there, has sent me. So the Lord is speaking in verse 8. It will be in verse 12 in some real deal, hard McCoy, uh, you know, uh, uh, Hebrew uh, volumes, you know, the real uh, deal, you know. Lord of hosts has sent me. And that's uh, Sha, that's Shelachani, Shelachani, me. The Lord of hosts has sent me. Shaliach, you know, that comes from that, you know. Uh, it's spelled out Sheen with the, with the Sheen dot. And then you got the you got the schwa underneath it, so the sh. Some people teach it like that, sh. Then you got the Lamed, the L, with the A class underneath it called Comets. And then the Chet, which is a guttural, so it's equal to the Chi in Greek, and then Comets there. And then you have the noon, which is an N. I'm right under the, basically the E and N in sense. That's an N there. 
looks like a telephone handle, right? The old fashioned one, you know? And uh, they had a dot underneath it, which is an I class. And uh, a Yoda right after that, acting like a vowel. It's a council name, but it's acting like a vowel. You understand? Shalachani. Apastal Kame in, uh, in uh, the perfect tense in another Greek Septuagint of 1851 or 52. So this is the deal. So you have the two members of the tr two of the three members of the Trinity here recorded, one sending another one, you understand? And then um and then you have in uh Psalmas uh 110, Psalm 109 in, in some uh Greek Septuagints, you have the Lord uh the, the Lord saying to my Lord. You see, the Lord says to uh, the Lord says to my Lord. Sit on my right hand until I make uh, your enemies a full stool for your feet. Yeah, I mean, sometimes the Holy Spirit keeps himself in the background. The re relationship between the Father and, and the Son, they weren't at this time uh, that um, I will be to him a father, he will be to me a son. You understand? I already mentioned that in the body of the study. That suffice. Okay, he keeps himself in the background, even in the Old Testament sometimes. You understand what I'm saying? Because he knew what was going to happen. In the new, he shall not glorify himself; he will glorify me. So he's going to be writing, the primary author of the book of the Bible, right? Camilo Sesto, I think, sung one song. Uh, está, está escrito en el libro divino. It's, it's written in the divine book. He meant the Bible, divine book. You know, so uh, so this is just the deal. So I mean, sometimes you're going to see two other members speaking. You, sometimes you're going to see two. Sometimes you're going to see three. But there are, are there, there is more than one person, okay, in in uh, in uh, one person uh, to God. And all of these verses put together, okay, confirm that claim. This is Angelo Quinones giving glory to God the Father, to the Lord Jesus Christ, and in the Holy Spirit. God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. And that means Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are very much alive at the time that Jesus said those words. Please subscribe to my channel. Please give me a thumbs up and please leave a comment on the screen. Thank you so much for joining this Bible study. Let me just rehash a little bit. We looked at uh, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, and Genesis uh, 1, 26, 3, 22, and 11, 7. And we saw in, in Greek uh, plural pronouns for God. We saw Hamon a couple of times in verse 26. Uh, we see um, Hamas. A couple, you know, at least one time there, and um, so that's just the deal. Also, nu was very, very, very um, prevalent there. In going to the Hebrew side of things, nu appears four times, okay, in uh, six occurrences in the Bible uh, for uh, for us, okay, in there for meaning for the uh, for. for you know, the, the word us. Nu means us in Hebrew. That's what I'm trying to say. Nu means us in Hebrew. Man, it's very hot in the Philippines sometimes. It's, it's, it's very strange. It rains a lot, and, and it's, then it's hot. It's just, it really throws you off. You're not used to that weather. It's either hot or cold, okay, <laughs> which reminds me of something in Revelation, okay, in, um, in, uh, in, uh, in New York. It's either hot or cold. It's not, you know, you know what I mean? Two things at the same time almost practically. So, um, so that's just the deal. So, new means us in Hebrew, and we found that, um, you know, four times out of the six times that uh, God is mentioned in the plural. New means us in Hebrew, like me, menu, lanu, and that's just the deal. So, before I melt away, let me go. Please subscribe to my channel. Please give me a thumbs up, and please leave a comment on the screen. Thank you so much for this this, this pleasant study. I hope you you see it you see it that way like I do, um, you know. And we were studying the Trinity, the Trinity in Genesis. Basically, is one of the off offshoots of um, of the time we're having uh, together. Well, God bless you so much. May God keep you and um, show you know share boldly uh, the message of Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ uh, and Him cruci uh, Jesus Christ crucified. And raised bodily from the dead. And if you call upon his name, you shall be saved. You shall be saved. That's what it says. Thank you, guys. Take care. Bye-bye now. Bye.
You just want to make sure I'm recording. This is just a deal. And I am. Hi everybody, this is Angelo Quinones, and I lost track of the appendices. <laughs> okay, this is the deal. But in the body of the study, I, I didn't promise, but I said that I might get you a um, get you the information that you would need to order, if you would like to do so, a book on the secrets of the Greek of every letter of the Greek alphabet. Okay. Now, this even goes into the most ancient um, letters, I believe. It, it touches upon the, the ancient letters. Like, for example, um, I believe it touches upon parakisma. Parakisma, which means pregnancy, which is the last letter. It was the last letter of the Greek alphabet until it was dropped off. And then Omega became uh, king on the block. So, if you would like to order this, this is my Amazon page. You could order it in your Amazon account. And it's by uh, Catherine R. Prope. And uh, it's called Greek Alphabet Unlock the Secrets. And remember I said there was a, a girl and she had one finger uh, over her lips saying, you know, shh, like that. Well, we don't want, shh, we want <laughs> the secrets, you know. Because it is, she, she gives a lot of... Um, great arguments for her points. Like, for example, um, the word uh, the the word Anastasis begins with uh, with the letter Alpha, which means rising. Anastasis means uh, resurrection. Is found and recorded in the Greek in the Greek New Testament, and that's among other things. And we can understand why Sigma was probably used for the tense formative for the future tense. At least that's she doesn't teach it like that. But at least I come across. Um, when I came across her information, uh, I, I kind of put two and two together. So, well, it means to synchronize. Well, it has to do with synchronize. It has to do with, has to do with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with future time. You know that this is in the future. Well, anyway, I mean, you know, it's, it's a great book, and and I think you'll enjoy it. And it's a short book too. It's not it's not like a book like a lot of information. She just gives information on each letter. And tells the meaning of it, and then she supports her arguments by different Greek words and things like that. So I hope you pick it up. This is Angelo Quinones giving glory to God the Father, to the Lord Jesus Christ, and in the Holy Spirit. God is not the God of the dead, Necron, with a cap or right, but of the living. And that means that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were very much alive at the time that Jesus said those words. Again, please subscribe to my channel. Please give me a thumbs up, and please leave a comment on the screen. I hope you enjoyed the study. Okay, on um, on uh, the Trinity, on the Trinity, and I uh, hope you pick up this book as well. I think it's, uh, I left it back home in the United States of America, but I'm going to see if I can order another one uh, to come to the Philippines because I really missed this book. Thank you so much, guys. Got to go. Bye.